Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for a whole new video. Thank you so much if you've come back. I must be doing something right. And if you're new, my name is Declan and be sure to subscribe because it would mean so much to me. While you're here, you might as well check out my Weird World Mystery videos. I've covered so many interesting and creepy cases. There's lots for you to enjoy. In today's video, I am going to be doing my Weird World web series where I read creepy stories posted to the web. And these are allegedly all true. Let's get right into it. This really isn't a video that you have to sit and watch, it's more so one that you can listen to while doing something else. I know a few of you guys love watching these whenever you're studying or going to bed. So sit back, relax and enjoy. The first story is called For Anyone With Loud Upstairs Neighbours. My sister and I were staying at an old historic hotel in the middle of nowhere, Montana. The building had been in use since the 1800s. My sister loves this place and has frequented it many times over the years. I was kept up all night by someone pacing around on the hardwood floors in the room above ours. It drove me crazy. In the morning, I asked my sister how she could sleep through it all, and she told me that the upstairs of the building used to be an old ballroom, but it's now carpeted and empty. The hotel staff confirmed that nobody was up there, and furthermore, if there were, I wouldn't have heard heels on the carpet. The next story is called Demon in the Dark. My family travelled to the south of France to stay in a cottage owned by someone my dad worked with. The owners visited occasionally, but that summer it was free and we had 10 days booked in there. After a long two days on the road, we drove down a steep driveway towards a secluded mill cottage, with the water wheel sat static alongside the stone house. There was a deep cellar with stone stairs down under the wheel next to the house, and a small river circled the place. We went down into the house and chose rooms, but being set down in a small copse, the house was drafty and cold from lack of use. We settled in and turned all of the heating on, yet the house still remained cold and felt damp. The first night, we had set a fire in the living room and listened to a couple of audiobooks before my sister and I went to sleep. My parents stayed up a little longer, then went to bed. Around midnight, they both woke up at exactly the same time and the door to their bedroom was opening slowly. At first they thought it was my sister, until they saw a large dark silhouette of a man framed in the doorway, standing stock still, just looking in their direction, as if appraising them. After a short period, the shape turned and started to move, as if satisfied, and disappeared. They looked at each other, but still didn't speak, and both just went back to sleep. The next morning, the house felt warm and dry, and sunlight was back through the windows, as if something had lifted and accepted them. They spoke the next day and both agreed that, although they were sceptics, it could not have been anything other than something supernatural in that doorway, deciding their worth. The next story is called Full Heart, Wet Hands. So I lived at this address, and they've kept the address private. The houses were built to house the people building the railway and the derby in the 1800s. I only found this out after I left the house, thankfully. It was a creepy house, really foreboding, and every time I washed my hair in the shower, every time I opened my eyes, I expected something to be there. Anyway, I came back after an afternoon lecture, one afternoon, opened the door, walked up the first flight of stairs, and saw a wet handprint on the floor. A really wet handprint. It was a bit like, uh, very strange, but I didn't feel freaked out. It was just out of the ordinary. So I walked up to see my housemate, Ed. I opened the door and he was sitting on the phone to his girlfriend, not crying, but massively in distress. That was when the penny dropped. He then told me that as he was walking up the stairs earlier, carrying a glass of water, he felt something cold go through him, almost a push, causing him to drop the water. He picked up the glass and ran upstairs to his room. The water falling out the glass had created a handprint on the floor, literally. Every digit was in proportion. I did freak out at the moment as I'd put two and two together. I told everyone to get out the house, which we did, but then sheepishly returned after a FIFA session around another friend's house. It was genuinely terrifying. Might not sound it, but it was. And all true. 
If someone offered me $50 to go back and spend the night there by myself, despite the fact I lived there for a year and almost no incident, I wouldn't. There was something that didn't want six college students there. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of the handprint. This was in 2012, prior to the culture of taking a photo slash selfie of literally everything. I wish I had though. Moving on, the next story is called House for Sale slash Currently Occupied. When I was a kid, we lived in a haunted house. Strange things happened there all the time. For example, we put a plate on the kitchen counter and walked away to the fridge. We got what we wanted out the fridge, turned around and walked back to the counter and the plate flew off the kitchen counter and broke on the floor. My dad tried to calm me by saying the plate must have blown off the counter, but let's face it, the plate wasn't near the edge of the counter and there were no windows or doors open. No one else was home. Weird. I also woke up to an old lady standing by my bed on more than one occasion. I told myself I was dreaming. This part might be dark. Here's the rest of the story. Years later, I looked up the address and found that an old couple lived there many years ago, right before we moved in. The house was broken into and the old woman was, and I can't say this word on my YouTube channel, and murdered. The old man sold the house and moved. We were the first occupants since the incident. We only lived there for about a year. My parents swear we moved so quickly because we got a better deal on another house nearby. But we know it was because the house was haunted and the priest they brought into the house to bless the place told them we should move. No joke. This next story is called Kitchen Nightmares. Okay, get ready for this story. So I was closing up the bar one night after a long shift. As I was carrying a rack of glasses into the kitchen, I slipped on the wet floor I had just mopped, fell on the floor and let out the instinctual scream. Immediately after this, as I'm sitting on the wet floor, I hear a low pitched moan. It was so audible that I actually thought it was a real person. This was startling considering I was the only person left in the bar. I stood up completely frozen and yelled, hello? Again, immediately, I heard the same low pitched moan, except this time it was louder. Now I'm starting to freak out a little bit, but for whatever reason I decided to walk closer to where I heard the sound coming from. I yelled very loudly, hello? For the third time I now hear a very loud low pitched moan. That was it for me. I ran back into the kitchen, grabbed the biggest kitchen knife I could find because that seemed logical at the time, grabbed my purse, ran out the door and never looked back. It was funny trying to explain to the chef the next day why he was missing a knife during his morning prep. The creepiest part? I come to find out that there was some sort of accident that had occurred in the restaurant years before with the son of the owner and word around town was that he had died right there in the bar. Moving on, this story is called Please Stop Moving the Kitchen Table. My house was fraught with weird stuff happening when we first moved in. The kitchen table would move overnight 12 to 18 inches. My keys will disappear and show up in the weirdest places, like my quilt trunk. My son, Christopher, went into the basement and things came flying off the shelf at him. He also saw someone walking on a wraparound porch once, but no one was there. The most obvious one was a few years ago. Twice this happened. I was sweeping the kitchen floor. The door to the porch started shaking uncontrollably. It was like someone was trying to open the door without turning the knob. Lasted about 15 seconds. Keep in mind, this was a wraparound porch completely enclosed. I knew it was bad because my dogs, who will bark at a butterfly flying past the window, all looked up at the door and stepped back. Both times this happened, and both times I was doing the exact same thing, around the same time of night. By the way, as a side note, I walked into the kitchen table one night while going to the bathroom. It was not the first time I walked into the kitchen table because it moved, so I just let out a, please stop moving the kitchen table, and it never happened again. So my last and final story for tonight is actually written by a video producer named James who works at GQ magazine. The story is titled, Click Click. This was around 2013. i just graduated from college and was living with my parents again in a house where weird things were always happening. It was around 3am and I was working as a freelance video editor, editing a very very bad music video for a local artist on my desk in my bedroom. My back was to the bed behind me. My dog Kovu, a pitbull lab mix, was laying next to me on the floor, fast asleep. 
After hours of watching the music video over and over again and listening to the same song on repeat for days, I decided to mute the edit as I worked on some effects, my headphones still on. And then I heard a click click. The lamp next to my bed, which was one of those twisty switches across the room, turned off then on again. Kovu sat up. He was staring directly above the lamp, his eyes fixed. But since I had my headphones on, I thought I had imagined what had just happened. Maybe the delirium of being awake that late and working on the same thing was making my head spin. I turned and continued to work. Headphones off. Click, click. Click, click. Off, on, off, on, twice. The dog was growling now. The hair on the back of his neck stood up and his gaze hadn't moved since the click started. I stared in the direction of the lamp. A chill ran down my spine. The room became cold. I was frozen. I slowly turned and looked at my laptop. Kovu was still growling and slowly got up. Click, 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 click. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Kovu started barking. The light was flickering on and off repeatedly, so I picked him up and ran out to my sister's room where I slept on the floor. The next day, I moved all my stuff out of that room and into the spare room. I really enjoyed reading these stories. I don't know if they're all true, but the people that are posting them say that they are, so we can only go with that. I do know, personally, how scary it can be to tell your story because the number one thing is that people are always very reluctant to believe you unless something similar happens to them. Remember to like, subscribe, it means you'll never miss another notification from me again, and I'll hopefully see you guys in my next video. Bye!